Stop each walking and rushing, man, like it's out the dark. Call me no snatcher. Just a brother for the rapture. I hang live, holding on strong, hard to capture. Extravagant, resurrect the track and it's militant. And I react like a con and start killing. It's manifesting. The gods work like appliances, dealing in my cycle. I'm like, Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Naruto Explain here, bringing you guys another discussion for Boruto Naruto Next Generations, the manga, and today we're going to be doing a major follow-up to the events of Boruto Chapter 69, and Chapter 69, there was a lot of stuff that happened, however, one thing that a lot of you guys have been bringing to my attention is the conversation between Sarda and Mitsuki, and in particular, that ominous line that was dropped in there where Mitsuki directly says that if it was up to him if he'd have been there if somebody would have tried to harm Borto or somebody tried to kill Borto that Mitsuki would not be able to control himself when confronted with that person now we as the audience we all know that this is very clear foreshadowing and setup however the other thing that we also know as the audience is that unbeknownst to Mitsuki Borto was actually killed by Kawaki and it's one of those things where that's a line that you don't drop in the manga without any intention of paying it forward. And there's been clear signs ever since Miski and Kawaki began interacting with one another that there was going to be an inevitable clash. And I think one of the first things that people jump to and look at is the events of Boruto chapter 58, where when Team 7 is doing their training, you have this scene where Team 7 are doing chakra control training and Kawaki gets very fed up in the first person who... He starts throwing hands with is Mitsuki and it's one of those things where we've seen over and over again how Mitsuki is very protective of Boruto. They have a very unique bond and there's something deeper when it comes to Mitsuki's urge to try and keep Boruto safe and this is one of those times where when you look at that and then you look at what you have in the anime where Mitsuki is being shown not fully trusting Kawaki even though they're on the same team together, Miski was keeping a very close eye on the character of Kawaki. We've seen in the past how the anime has laid down foreshadowing for future events in the manga, and I do not think that's by mistake that this current anime arc is showing Kawaki wavering between doing things the way that Boruto and Naruto say that Shinobi have to do, and then Kawaki showing those impulses of being somebody that was affiliated with Kara to the point where he's like, why we ain't just killing everybody that's in our way? Miski's picked up on that tab, and Miski's been following Kawaki, and now you have this line here in the manga where all of Miski's suspicions about Kawaki, unbeknownst to him, they've been confirmed. And I want to talk to you guys about the inevitable clash of Miski versus Kawaki and why. This is a fight that is absolutely needed. And most importantly, this is a fight that is downright inevitable. Now, I don't think we're going to see this battle before the time skip. I actually think this is going to be a battle that we see later on down the line. Just based off how Kishimoto's written stuff in the past, this kind of feels like something he would build up towards. The only way I could see this actually working is if we have a scenario where Miski ends up fighting against Kawaki and it's just showed as a benchmark for how much stronger Miski has to get because he's already sparred with Kawaki and he's fought against him in his base. However, He's not fought against Kawaki using the karma, and he's not fought against Kawaki when he's using Ishiki Otsutsuki's dojutsu powers. And if you have Kawaki just absolutely body Miski before this time skip, because Kawaki ends up deeming Boruto as being a potential threat because he does not yet know that Momoshiki can't resurrect in his body, but say Kawaki does learn that there still is a chance that Momoshiki can hijack Boruto's body, thereby making Boruto a threat towards Naruto and the other people in the village. That could be the grounds for some type of battle taking place, and you use that as a benchmark for Miski to realize how much stronger he has to get because he has to protect Boruto from Kawaki. That could be one of those driving factors there. Now, for a time skip, the reason why I think this makes more sense in the time skip is you allow this battle to be one that takes place on a much larger scale because we've already had them go base to base. But if you don't allow Miski to fight against Kawaki and Miski does not have that Sage transformation fully mastered to the point where it's not damaging his body, it's going to be a handicap. And given how strong Miski already is in his base, 
When you add in that unique sage transformation and those powers he's able to use, that power up because of how strong his base is, that's the only way he's gonna have any sort of opportunity. And if you go into this time skip and they've been training specifically to get strong enough to take on Otsuski caliber threats, if they can get into that absurd power scale where the current Kages are, where they're able to fight against Kenshiki and Momoshiki and not get killed. And in some cases, put those two Otsuski on the defensive. If Sard and Miski are able to get to that power level and you stack up that unique Sage transformation on top of a base that's strong, you start making the argument for Miski to be able to fight against Kawaki, Kawaki body him, and then it just renews his vigor moving forward. It's that gut check moment, much like how you had in part two of Naruto, where we're around volume 34, the manga. Sasuke looked at the members of Team 7. Naruto and Sakura spent the last two and a half years training. They got incredibly powerful. Sasuke pulls up on Yamato, bodies Yamato like it's absolutely nothing bodies naruto like it's nothing suppresses the qb inside of naruto in the manga version of the story sakura is taken out very easily the anime had her kind of standing around in the manga not so much it's one of those things where sasuke's growth is what ultimately ended up spurring naruto to seek out a higher level of power after that that's the whole reason why he went and trained with kakashi following the events of that fight right there and this is one of those times where I think Kawaki can be used in that manner. Now, this is all assuming that Kawaki ends up being evil, which, again, I still stand by it. If you're saying Boruto is going to be a rogue ninja, I don't think that's the case. This ain't going to be something like Attack on Titan. I'll do a whole video breaking this down on why Boruto is not going to be the anti-hero who's secretly a hero. I'm, I don't think we're going that route there. However, all signs do point towards Kawaki eventually just splitting from Konoha. And those lines in the manga chapter with Miski saying that if anybody tries to kill Boruto, he couldn't control himself. I think this is inevitably going to be that moment where Miski, much in the same way he was ready to eliminate Sumire in the Academy arc, I think that Miski's going to do something similar with Kawaki, only this time it's not going to be Boruto who stops him from killing somebody like, say, with Sumire. This time, Miski is just going to be too weak to actually do it. But I do feel like this moment between these two, between Boruto's two brothers, is needed for their character development. Miski's like a brother to Boruto, much in the same way that Kawaki's a brother, but Kawaki has a stronger bond with Boruto. This is one of those times where if they're going to support Boruto, they have to get strong enough to where they can keep up with Kawaki when Kawaki begins to start using karma. However, I want to know from you guys, number one, if Mitsuki and Kawaki mix it up right now, who do you think wins? And then when we jump into a time skip, how strong do you think Mitsuki needs to get in his base before he starts using Sage Transformation to where he'd be able to keep up with Kawaki? Where does his base need to get to? Let me know down in the comment section below. So always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Have an awesome day, guys.